I think we're getting closer in, but we are not yet there. So I think that monetary policy will need to continue um, hiking interest rates uh, and until inflation shows signs that it is uh, decelerating in a sustainable manner and converging, uh, you know, uh, sometime from now, but not too distantly from now to the to monetary policy targets. So I think that this is the case both in the United States, in the euro area, and in the United Kingdom. Uh, but I think that uh, when we come to the summer, we'll see a sort of uh, stopping of the hiking, oh, and then we will have a period where interest rates remain stable, or in some cases, there may be a chance that they may be reduced before the end of the year. But I think that we should not hold uh, too high hopes that the reduction of interest rates is going to be happening very early in the second half of the year. Yeah, something definitely to be cautious about. Also, it feels as though the market narrative has now shifted from hiking interest rates, where the peak is going to be, towards the impact all of this monetary policy tightening is actually going to have on growth. Mm. What is your assessment for 2023? Yeah, I think that the narrative is definitely changing. In last year, the focus was on inflation, and this year, I think the focus is on, on the slowdown yeah. in growth, which is partly caused by the uh, monetary policy uh, uh, you know, tightening that we are mm -hmm. seeing, but also by other factors. And I think that even if it's true that for a whole year we're going to see a sort of deceleration of, of growth, I think that the year is going to be marked by a couple of very important contrasts. One is in terms of timing, first half versus second half. In the first half, we're going to see still the, you know, the negative uh, economic consequences of the tightening of monetary policy contributing to the deceleration of growth. But I think that in the second half, uh, we're going to see with the stopping of interest rate increases and the beneficial consequences of the reopening of China yeah. and hopefully yeah. the European and U.S. economies having left the wars behind them, that we're going to see a much better second half. So second half, much better than the first. Mm. And then we're also seeing a contrast between East and West. And again, the East is, doing to do, is going to do, in my view, much better than the West in terms of growth in Asia is going to be, Asia and the Middle East are going to be the main drivers. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you about the China reopening. I thought it was really interesting that we had the vice president of China, Lu He, speak at the World Economic Forum yesterday, and he said he laid out two principles. He said we're going to focus on the economy, and they're also going to think about uh, providing support to the property sector. Did you hear that and think, OK, 2023 is going to be a great year for the Chinese economy then? I think that China is not only going to have, in my view, uh, a very good year, but I think it's going to surprise on the upside. Because uh, it's not just that the reopening from COVID is going to happen uh, quite fast, given you know the, the, the very significant the wave which is going on in China and the herd immunity that I think is, is a difficult thing from the human point of view. But the good news yeah. is that maybe over soon, so that as of the second quarter, we may start seeing significant signs of pickup in, in the second uh, half of the year, I think that the Chinese economy is going to be on fire, mm. and that's going to be very, very important for the rest of the world. And this is not just coming from the reopening from, from, from COVID, but also coming from the support that the government is providing with the fiscal policy, support to the property sector, which is extremely important, and also reducing the intensity of regulation or the regulatory crackdown on some sectors like the IT sector. So I think all of those things are going to be very important. Yeah, on positives. that point, I thought it was interesting as well that they reiterated about the, the common prosperity goal. But in, in yesterday's framework, they, they laid it out as a long-term plan rather than a short-term plan. So sort of push aside market concerns that there will be a further yeah. regulatory crackdown. So I think that's a really notable point. But look, Standard Chartered is a very global bank, and uh, you've got a presence in many emerging market economies. Last year, again, was a year of, of significant monetary policy tightening, also the strength of the U.S. dollar. And I've got to say I was a little bit surprised that how relatively resilient some of these EM economies were, given how much the Fed did hike. W were you surprised as well? And do you expect some of that resilience to continue? Well, not, not all emerging markets are created equal. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. And they have very different uh, exposures to the uh, higher dollar and higher interest rates coming from the United States. And those who are more affected uh, negatively are those which uh, have high foreign currency uh, indebtedness. And there are a number of uh, low-income countries 
and uh, lower middle income countries, which have definitely, definitely uh, going into, into difficulties. But for the vast majority of emerging markets, things are going well. And again, if you look in particular to many emerging markets in Asia, uh, of course, the Middle East are benefiting from the uh, oil price increases. But in Asia, they're doing quite well. You look at India, it's been a great year for India. You look at some of the economies that were more uh, sort of um, affected by the taper tantrum of the Fed a few years back uh, in, the, in the ASEAN region. Uh, they're doing very well. So I think that the improvement in the fundamentals of emerging markets, the improvement in the accumulation of foreign exchange reserves, better economic policies, better governance, all of that helps attract confidence and I think or preserve confidence and I think that this is a big plus for them so confident overall all right let's talk about the UK uh, because it was a bit touch and go in, in 2022 people started speculating about uh, UK's lack of productive growth capabilities uh, the fiscal books came under uh, a lot of uh, uh, the supervision uh, in the latter half of the year there's a new government in place obviously they understand the importance of keeping the fiscal books in order but how is the situation on the ground? What are you seeing in the UK? And are you optimistic? Well, I am confident that the government uh, knows what needs to be done in order to address the situation. But the situation is difficult. The UK is going through a combination of factors, um, both short term and long term, uh, which is uh, creating problems. Uh, this year, the UK will uh, be in recession territory. Um, and um, uh, the cost of living squeeze is something that everyone in the United Kingdom is, is, uh, is, is feeling. But I think that the best way to uh, uh, go through this is to maintain discipline in the fiscal uh, policies, to maintain confidence in terms of uh, providing a good environment for the private sector to operate. And then there are things which would help, like an improved relationship between the United Kingdom and Europe. And I have hopes that the current discussions which are underway regarding the so-called North England, uh, Ireland uh, protocol, protocol, that those uh, would be uh, ending on a positive uh, note. And I also hope that there can be a better relationship between the two, uh, UK and the European Union. Mm. So uh, positive, but I think that uh, is not going to be easy to overcome the difficulties. Well, I'll be speaking to the Irish finance minister here at the World Economic Forum, so hopefully we'll get some more, uh, more positive sense there. Final question for you. Standard Chartered has been uh, targeted as a potential acquisition uh, for some other banks uh, around the world. Is this something that the board would consider? Well, um, we uh, have learned about it by reading in the, it in the news, uh, I can tell you. So um, that's it. We don't comment on, on the thoughts that others may, may have. We're very focused on executing our strategy, which is working very well. We're very happy that as a result we have been one of the top performing uh, banks in stock markets uh, in the past year. And again, we're focused on delivering higher returns, higher value for our shareholders and all of our stakeholders. And that's our main objective. So uh, I think that if people, uh, you know, we're seeing that people are buying shares because the share prices are going up. Uh, but we want to remain uh, committed to what we're doing in an independent manner. And that's what we focus on, executing the strategy.